Okay guys, so I'm finally back with another monthly check-in. Um, July was a little rough for me. If you saw the burnout video that I posted a couple weeks ago, then you already know this, that I was really struggling in July to get my stuff together, if you will. So, um, I did miss last month's check-in, but I wanted to make sure to jump back into it this month because I really think that it's beneficial to both you guys to be able to see some behind the, behind the scenes stuff, but also kind of beneficial to me to hold myself accountable um, to making these goals because I'm telling you now what my goals for August are. So, um, I can't turn around and change that later. It will help me be held accountable. If you didn't see the burnout video, really quick recap of it is basically that I got overwhelmed with all the work that I was doing, all the different new projects I was taking on, and mostly probably because of this YouTube channel, because it is a lot of work that if you don't have a YouTube, you, you don't probably do not realize how much work it actually takes and getting up two videos a week is actually kind of aggressive especially when it's not your full-time income so I've gone back and forth as to whether or not I should just cut it down to one video a week um, because it would help me out with my other projects and keep my sanity but then at the same time, I'm like, suck it up, buttercup, because you want to try your hardest to get monetized before the holiday season this year, because as extra income, that can really help me out. Even if it's just a little bit, anything can help at this point. So I really want to try to stick to my two videos, which I will for this month, and I will reevaluate for next month. So I do want to talk a little bit in the beginning about what I decided to change um, to maybe hopefully help me with the burnout and to get back on track. So what I ended up doing um, that I think is probably going to be the most beneficial thing for me is to really reassess my schedule. Um, because my schedule, and I don't know if I mentioned this in any of my videos, um, maybe that I like to batch things as much as possible because I feel like it saves time. So my schedule before was I want to get out two videos per week. So I um, said, okay, so Mondays I'm going to write two scripts and Tuesdays I'm going to record two videos and Wednesdays I will edit those videos. Thursdays will be for post-production and then Friday I can go ahead and post them or maybe I post them Friday. Sometimes they take a while to upload, so I'll do that on Fridays. And that was the plan, and it seemed perfectly reasonable. Um, one of the issues I did run into was that I was trying so hard to get ahead a couple weeks, to give myself some time and room if anything came up in any of my other businesses or personal life, I would be able to have time to make up for it over the course of a couple weeks. Um, the problem with that is I did not have enough time to get ahead because that meant doing even more work than that and that was already full capacity for me. Um, so I ran into that issue and then the other issue I was finding was that writing two scripts for me was very difficult to do in two days. And not only that, but um, I, becoming an entrepreneur, I really didn't want to have a set schedule and is doing the same thing every week. I mean, yes, I think you need to have a plan and a schedule in place, but there is a way to do it so that it will also allows flexibility. And let's face it, that's one of the nice things about being an entrepreneur. And besides money, probably one of the things that draws many people to it. You have something to do in the middle of the week, in the middle of the day, you just go do it. Just do you know what you want and then work till you when you want. And that's kind of the beauty of it, even though it causes me to never stop working, um, but I can if I need to or I want to. And so having every day scheduled out like that and then saying, I have to do this on on Monday, write my scripts, and if I don't get both written now, I can't record on Tuesday. Um, and so if I write another script on Monday and push recording back to Tuesday, now I have to push my editing back. So it really could create um, a bit of an issue if I run into um, anything on those days. 
Um, so that really wasn't going to work out for me. So uh, trying to keep the whole batching thing in mind because I do like to do that. I realize where there's some areas I would like more flexibility and others are not a big deal. For me, recording, I'm fine to sit down and record a bunch of videos at one time. I have to get ready to record them, so might as well get more done at one time. Uh, but scripts, I definitely don't want to feel like I'm forced to sit down and write a bunch of scripts. Especially because my scripts, for the most part, I'm teaching you guys something and I really like to do my research and I like to get all my ideas down and then I like to figure out the best way to organize it. I try to make my videos as much as possible more of like a step-by-step -step process. Uh, I find, I always find it easier that way. You can tackle the first thing, check, move on to the next, check, and if you have a step-by-step -step process, it just makes things a little easier. It's not always possible, but I do try to structure my videos in that way. And so, all that being said, it takes me a while to write a script. Between the research, between the organization, how do I want to put it in? And then trying to think like, what kind of B-roll do I want? What kind of graphics do I want? I'm finding that scripting is taking even more time than the editing part. Usually, if I script um, a video well enough, I don't end up with a whole lot of editing to do. So, um, I definitely want to make sure I can fit in scripting. So going forward now, the plan for August, and hopefully this will work and I'll be doing it from here on out, the plan is to um, do four to five videos at a time, right? So I'll be basically splitting the month up. And so I will give myself one whole week to write four to five scripts. So whether that's one per day, whether it's almost one every other day, maybe I want to do two one day and then, you know, two another day, whatever it is I want to do. If I finish one and I'm feeling motivated to write, motivated to write another one, then I can go ahead and I can do that. But giving me myself the whole week really allows me to have more flexibility and not feel, um, I mean, sometimes you just don't feel motivated to write. You kind of, when it comes to something more creative like that, if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. And it's really hard to get yourself in the groove. Um, and then I'm going to give myself a data to video to record the videos. Um, and then that will be followed by a week of editing. So I give myself a whole week to edit those four to five videos. And so that will be a two week process. And then I will repeat it again the next two weeks and that will give me a month worth of content. And that's the idea. If I'm giving my, myself a week for scripts, I'm giving myself a week for editing. If I end up needing two days for recording, it's really not a big deal. I have the time to do that. So I'm really hoping that this is going to work better and that I can stop missing uploads because I know consistency is really important. And if there happens to be any of you actually waiting on my videos, then you might be bummed if I, you don't see one come up. I do have a few YouTubers that when they miss their uploads, I actually get kind of bummed when they don't have one up. So we're going to see how that goes. So that's kind of like uh, just the main discussion, where I've been, where I was at, what kind of my goal for the next concentration for the next month is going to be. But of course, these videos are going through all of my goals for the previous month and then setting them for the next month. Let's go ahead and jump into those goals now. Okay, so now let's look at the numbers goals that I set for July and let's see how I did. Um, so for the journal effect, my planner and sticker business, I did set a sales goal of $3,480. Um, it is again, slow time of season for me, but now going forward through till the end of the year, things should start picking up a little by little. And I did actually miss my goal, but I mean, when I say I missed it by the skin of my teeth, I actually ended up with 3448. So you can see I was very, very close in there. And actually it amazes me because I set all these monthly goals at the beginning of the year for the whole year. And I overall for the year, I'm within $200 of my goal. So through the end of July in the first seven months, I'm within $200, which is amazing to me. Um, when you're still newer, 
I just, in general, I think it's kind of hard to um, set numbers, goals like that. There's so many factors that come into play. So to get that close is awesome. Um, okay, so um, my YouTube subscriptions and watch hours, um, that's number num another numbers goal that I wanted to look at. And for July, I set the goal of 300, yeah, 350 subscribers and 1,100 watch hours. And it's not really too much of a surprise that I did not hit the watch hours because I didn't upload any videos for like a month. So I really shot myself in the foot there. Uh, but by some miracle, I did make my subscriber goal. So thank you guys so very much for subscribing. I really, really appreciate it. So my subscribers goal was 350. My actual was 406. So actually a good amount better, but my hours watched was only at 941 uh, with the goal of 1100. So I'm off quite a bit there and I do have my next month goal jump up quite a bit. So it's going to be a struggle, but I'm still going to try because I'm still trying and aiming for that November 1st monetization. We will see really a lot of it's up to YouTube as long as I make sure I'm putting videos out there. Um, but I gotta do better with that, I know. So let's look at the actual work goals and see how I did there. So for July for YouTube, um, I originally had, I originally had not to miss any videos. Obviously that did not happen. And other than not missing any goals, my goal was to also get ahead, which clearly I didn't. I just got farther behind. So not so good on the YouTube front. Um, however, for the journal effect, that's a different story. I actually did quite well there. Um, my main work goal for the journal effect for last month was to finish my new dot icon stickers that I was designing um, and get them all out there on my website. And uh, it was over 200 of them. So I'm sorry, over 100 of them. Um, well, actually, each one comes with three different colored sheets. So technically 300 of them. That, um, that I needed to get done. So it was a lot and I actually did get it done. So, um, and they are finished and my cut files are done and my listings are done and out there. So that's awesome that I was able to actually get one goal completed this month. So overall, I would say how I did last month was pretty bad. <laughs> I'm bummed um, by the burnout, but all you can do is move forward. You know, this stuff is gonna happen from time to time. All you can really do is just just keep pushing and just keep going and things will turn around and you just need to maybe look for something new to get you excited again or uh, maybe it's just pushing through period but just keep going and you can turn things around I'll show you how it's done because I'm about to do it this month I swear okay so now that we've gone through everything from last month let's go ahead and let's set some goals for August my numbers goals for August for the journal effect, like I said, these I actually had created at the beginning of the year. That sales goal for the month of August is $3,660, okay? Um, for my digital shop, which I know I didn't even mention in last month's because, well, I haven't done anything with that shop. Um, I am setting a goal for this month because I am determined to get moving in that on that shop like I need to be. Um, and so my sales goal is only $50, but uh, considering I've only had one sale on my shop, $50 is a pretty steep one. Um, and then for YouTube, my subscriber count, my goal is 500 and my hours watched goal is 1800. And again, this is set based on trying to get monetized by November 1st. Um, it will take a miracle for me to reach that goal but I'm going to try my best. So then let's get into the work goals for August. So my main work goal for YouTube, which is what I have the most control over and what I've been struggling with the most, is to just try to not miss my uploads. Um, you're watching this video on Tuesday. It should have gone out on Friday. So obviously I'm not starting off great. Um, however, I do want to add um, at least seven more for this month. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But the biggest goal that I have for the YouTube is to really commit 
to the schedule that I was discussing at the beginning of the video. Um, I need to find the right schedule for me. And once I do that, once I find what, what really works for me, I think that it, things will go a lot smoother and I may not feel, hopefully won't feel as overwhelmed. Um, so I'm, I have to commit to this new schedule and give it 100% and hopefully it will end up sticking. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do, the one other thing I wanted to do for um, YouTube for August is I want to start figuring out how to get set up with affiliate marketing. So I still need to do some research there um, and figure out, you know, what all I need to do in order to get that going and hopefully start making some money. So as far as the digital shop, so we're just going to jump into the digital shop here. Um, I, if you watch the last video, you know, I just haven't, if you go look at my digital shop, I haven't done anything with it. Okay. I had a whole YouTube series on how to create it and I haven't done anything with it. Um, and that's mainly because of time. And so I really want to recommit to the digital shop. Now, my goal is to add 10 new items to the shop this month. Um, with everything I have going on, it might not seem like that much, but 10 is a lot for me. So 10 new items and some of them I think are going to be printables. I, I do want to add some printables. I have digital stickers and planners in there and I think it would be nice to add some, you know, different printable items as well. And the other thing I want to do to try to boost sales for this month is to run sales pretty much all month I think I'm going to. Typically I wouldn't do that but because I need to get, um, like I would never do that on my, uh, my regular store, um, on my journal effect. But on the, my digital Etsy shop, I need to get the ball rolling. I need to get sales and I need to get reviews. And so um, the plan is to basically have it on sale all month. But the key is I want to run 24 hour sales. Um, so I maybe I'll do it every other day. Um, run, set up a 24 hour sale every other day. Um, but this way, when you set it up for 24 hours, you get that countdown timer and um, that's supposed to help create a sense of urgency. So we will see how that goes. Of course, I'll let you know next month. And then we get into the journal effect, which is a much larger list of things that I want to accomplish. Um, one thing that I really need to do is I need to redesign my website and I've wanted to do this for a while. Um, I find mine boring. It looks kind of washed out on my iPad. It looks okay when I look at it on the laptop, but when I look at it on my iPad, it's like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, I think. Um, I don't know if it's the colors or whatnot. But there are some other things I want to add to my shop, and I haven't updated my website as far as like just the aesthetics of it and the way that it runs in a couple years. And Shopify has come a very long way. How you can go about creating your websites and how you can make them more customized and how the whole the whole platform works as far as creating the actual website and designing it. And so I know they've come a long way with it and I haven't sat down to learn the new stuff. So um, I need to dedicate some time to like learning it and then working on it. And the nice thing about Shopify, if you if you don't have a Shopify account, is that you can be working on um, a new website without, it's kind of behind the scenes, so no one's going to see what you're doing um, until you actually go and you release it. So I can work on that while everything's still up and running and I can take two months if I need to to work on it, but I do want to start this month figuring out what it all is I want to do. Of course you could hire somebody, but it is super expensive. So I'm trying to avoid that. Um, I do want to design and add 10 new functional sticker packs to my shop. Right now I only have a couple and I really like them, um, but I, you know, I've been working on other things. So I would really like to add a couple at least 10 more of them, if not more. I need to order supplies in preparation for the holiday season um, for my journal gifts, uh, gift sets, and some other um, gift sets that I'm planning on making for Christmas season for um, for those stationary lovers like me. Um, there'll be planners and journals and stuff like that. 
And so I do need to get on top of uh, finding supplies or reordering supplies that I need to restock. Um, believe it or not, holiday season is right around the corner. Um, you should really, as a business, try to be like three months ahead. So that's why you go and it's summertime. It just became summertime and you're seeing like Halloween stuff out and fall stuff out. Um, retail wise, you try to stay three months ahead of time. So the last thing I need to do this month for my journal effect business, and it's just for my business in general, is actually really exciting to me. And I will have a vlog about it on my YouTube channel here um, when it's all said and done. But I, it's going to take me a couple weeks to get it all together. But if you saw my video about uh, my office tour that I put up like a month and a half ago, um, I said in that video that within the next six or seven months, I would be expanding to another room in, in my house. Um, uh, long story short, somebody moved out. My sister lived here and she moved out and she had a very large room. And so um, she actually ended up leaving quicker much quicker than I had anticipated. And so the room is available now for me to go ahead and create my new office. And the idea is to make it a more of a production office. Um, so it'll be extra stock, like back stock of things. And it'll be all set up for actually producing journals and planners and stickers and my kits and all of that stuff. So my downstairs office that's in that video, and I will link that here if you want to see that video of my office tour. Um, most of that's gonna stay the same. Um, just the the cutting machine, the punching machine, the, the silhouettes will move upstairs, and a little bit of the supplies will move upstairs. And, um, and yeah, it'll be my production office, if you will. So that's the plan. Um, so I'm excited about that. I'm excited to be able to show you guys that and I'm going to, um, I would look for that at the end of August. I should hopefully have it, um, up by the end of August, if not beginning of September. Okay. So those are all my goals for August. Um, I wanted to do a little Q and A. So you probably noticed that I did not do the post that I said I was going to do before the end of the month, asking you guys questions. And if I'm going to be completely honest, which I really want to try to do in this channel, the biggest reason I didn't do it is fear. Fear that nobody was going to respond and um, that it would be a little bit embarrassing. But I realize that is dumb. Okay, I am still new to this. I am still a brand new channel and that there shouldn't be anything embarrassing if people don't respond. Um, so I promise you that at the end of August, I will have, um, a post on the community tab so that any questions you guys have in general for me, any questions you can put on there and I will record it in my next month monthly check-in for the end of the video Q and A wise. But with that being said, I also do look at videos that I have posted and what you guys comment. And I did have a few requests for doing more videos on creating planners in InDesign. That's both digital and printable planners you guys asked about. And I actually really do want to do that because when I was learning how to do this stuff in InDesign myself, I think I found like two people that actually create planners um, and use InDesign in that way. I mean, there you could definitely find classes on learning InDesign, but what you'll find is there's so much in there. And if you're look at making books, journals, planners, things that are kind of, um, I think they call them low content books because you have a lot of repeat things, a lot of lines, not a lot of written text. Um, there's a lot you don't really need to know in there. And so to learn everything just to figure out what you really need to know for creating those types of things is, well, frustrating and time consuming. So I really would like to be able to create those videos for you guys and um, 
take out some of that stuff that is unnecessary. And you know that like when you're working on something, if you're like, wait, how do I do this? You could do a quick search on YouTube and someone has a short video on how to do that one particular thing. So like always, I'm just wanna, you know, uh, focus on like more step-by-step -step and giving you all the tips and tricks I think that you need for specifically making for those types of planners and journals. So hopefully that's something that many of you are interested in. Like I said, I did have a few ask for that. And so what I will probably do is start creating some smaller videos because the one I have up is an hour and a half and um, maybe just like have like a couple of month that I add in there so that any of you that aren't interested in that particular topic aren't sitting there like, ugh, I don't care about this. Um, so I really want to have like a wide range of videos for my YouTube channel because it's really geared around being an entrepreneur. And when you're an entrepreneur, I mean, you are interested in tons of things. You wear many hats. And I know two entrepreneurs are the same. You have different things that you're good at throughout your business. You have different projects you're interested in. So there's so many, there's so many different aspects to being an entrepreneur that I, I do get concerned that if I'm trying to touch on all these different things, that YouTube is going to be confused. I'm going to confuse the algorithm. YouTube is going to be like, what are you even talking about? You have vlogs. You're talking about InDesign. You're talking about Etsy. You're talking about Shopify. You're talking about all these different things. What is your purpose? And that's kind of what I'm afraid of. But for now, we're going to go with it because, well, I really think that a lot of this stuff is important because you're not just into one thing are you if you want to learn how to make planners to sell that means you're interested in business and there's going to be a lot more that you need to know besides how to create those planners right like how to create your store how to market your store you know how to hire people things like that so when i do talk about subjects like that are more specific say etsy or say um you know in design or creating planners or if I show you how I create my journals or my stickers or something like that. Just know that it will not be now she's going to talk about this all the time. I'm going to keep things mixed up so I kind of have something for all the entrepreneurs out there. And just cross my fingers that that will actually work and I don't have to niche down too much. Everybody's like niche down, niche down, niche down. I don't really want to, to be honest. Um, I feel like things would get kind of boring and that you guys would grow out of my channel, just like I will grow out of my channel. So I've rambled on long enough today. If you have made it this far through the video, thank you, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it, I really do. And of course, I really hope these check-ins are bringing you some kind of value and some insight to how this aspiring entrepreneur is making her way to financial freedom eventually, someday, hopefully. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.